us here in truth. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit comes today from Psalm 64, verse 1 to 10. As I read, let the Spirit speak to your hearts. Hear my voice, O God, and my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the, of the wicked, from the instruction of, instruction of the workers of iniquity, for who with their tongue like a sword, and being their bows to shoot their arrows, even bear the words, that they may shoot in the secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an the evil matter. They commune of laying snares properly. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search, but the inward thought of every one of them in the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall they shall be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away, and all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. And they shall wisely consider his doom. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord. And shall trust in him, and all the upright in and heart shall glory. We thank God for his holy word. Amen. 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 to say happy Sabbath to everybody. Sometimes when we get into this truth, I know for me, I give you my testimony. When I got into the truth, I was like an M16, I was shooting everybody down. And uh, everybody used to say, man, you like a scribe and you like a scribe and a Pharisee. I ain't quite understand it until I researched it. But when I understood it, it's like you putting heavy burdens on people and you condemning people. And you don't know what their walk is. A lot of people don't understand that, like when I didn't understand it that people are transitioning into the Word of God. And what we do, we even sometimes hit them too hard and uh, they'll run away from us or they'll run, run away from the truth. So I had to calm down when I did stuff. And a lot of stuff that I was saying was wrong. Like I said <laughs> back in the day when I had my shop, I used to uh, I read this scripture, I listened to some Israelites online and they were telling me that I couldn't ball ahead. Because it's like marring. Like marring means like you cutting the hair. So I was sitting there thinking to myself, I gotta find another position, not find another uh, 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 job because I wanna serve the Lord right. But I took it and ran with it instead of researching. I find too many other scriptures in the Bible where it wasn't talking about it. We were talking about destroying your uh, ball, destroying your hair follicles, cutting the corners of your beard or the round the corners of your head or more the size of your beard, all that stuff. And I kind of took it and ran with it but I, without understanding. So this lesson is just put together so we won't be so puffed up in our knowledge and condemn people. You don't want to condemn people and have them thinking that they can't make it. God had plenty of people telling me, so Jeff, you the only one going to make it in your little congregation, huh? I said, no. 
I said, why do you say that? Because you told him I'm going to hell. If I don't, if he's going to hell if I keep eating this wine. And I did say that, but I should have put something apart of that. I should have said, if you repent and stop it, you won't go. But if you continue to do it, that's your destination. And that's, that's the, it's a little small thing, but it's big. So you got to meet people where they're at. And I don't want us to turn into any scribes or Pharisees. So I'm going to go break this lesson. Now we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 1. To understand what makes a scribe, what makes a Pharisee. Because those are the ones that sit in Moses' seat. Those are the lawgivers. Or you can say those are the preachers. If you got this Bible and you preach the word of God in the church, you sit in Moses' seat. And you best believe you better be teaching the people right. Because we as preachers are going to be just, just the strictest out of all the congregation. So I take this very serious. If I don't quite understand something, I don't fool with it. For a I don't fool with it. If I don't quite understand something, and many people have brought stuff for me, it took me a year or two or whatever to kind of understand it, but to God give me the understanding, that's how I roll with it, to I understand it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23 and verse 1. But the major stuff, I do understand. <laughs> the major stuff that gets salvation, I do understand. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 1. Let me get it, brother, go ahead. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. He's talking about the preachers or the Levites. The Levites was the ones that had the priesthood. They was the only one that sit in Moses' seat of the biblical priest. But I tell brothers and sisters now, inside, when you sit in, when you saying that you're a Levite, you got to prove that you're a Levite. By registry. You go to Ezra chapter 2, I was going to get it, might get it later on this lesson, but if you can't prove that you're a Levite, they was put you out of the priesthood. But I got a lot of brothers and sisters of all nations saying they're Levite, taking time and all. I just throw that out there. So you got to prove from registry. It's in the book. Ezekiel chapter, I mean Ezra chapter 2. But we'll get it, hopefully. Go ahead. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. Yes, sir. That observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. It's all they tell you to do. If they come out of the book telling you to do it, do so, you do it. But don't follow after their works, because a lot of them they put in, they looking at they tell people to do stuff, but they are not doing it themselves. Go ahead, verse 4. It'll show you right here. For they be in heavy burdens and grievous to be born. Yes, sir. Lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. You got a lot of people out here put heavy burdens on people. And you look in their life, they, anybody can put on the front for about a couple of hours. But when you start sitting back watching the person, looking at the person's action, and believe me, you preaching the word of God, they looking at you. They watching you. They seeing what you're doing. And God will, some, God will nine times out of ten expose you if you don't get it right. He said, don't bind the heavy burdens on people. Go ahead. But all their works they do for to be seen for, of me. You know how the brothers out in the street, our Hebrew brother, they yell at people, calling women names, cursing them out. I mean, then they go back and try to tell you about the word of God. These people not listening to you. You damn these people because they wearing pants. You going to hell, sister, you cause you wearing pants. And they used to, and I was a part of that years ago because I thought pants were just for men. Until I understood that pants weren't just for men. They had men pants and they had women pants. And they go in Deuteronomy chapter 22 and look at that and they think he's just talking about pants. No, they're talking about trans. What do they call that? Gender. Cross, cross, cross dressing. But well, we're going to get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Go ahead, we Start at five again. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They like to be seen. They want to be seen. They want to be recognized as the man of God. Reverend so and so. Bishop so and so. 
All them titles. They want to be seen, recognized. And then, what else are they doing? They make broad their philosophies mm -hmm. and enlarge the borders of their garments. They make broad of their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. They put on the biggest thing that God told them to put on so they can shine in front of people. For an example, for in our generation, people with suits. They want to be clean. Pastor can't show up now. You got to have a three-piece suit. You got to make sure you're clean. Man, just wear something. Don't try to go over and beyond. You got to have no $2,000 suit. Like them Israelites on the street out there, they say them brothers got on costumes like Superman. But if you look back in the, in, if you look in the scripture, that's where you're to go. That's how the Israelites dress. And when you see that stuff, don't just laugh at it. They trying to, it, 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 some way form is right compared to what, if you read the scriptures. But he tell them not to be with everything so big. You got a big uh, a breast paint for the Levites. You got a head covering it big and all this stuff like this. You got all this stuff that you showing so big. You ain't dressing moderate. And that's all he's saying. Don't be the one that out there so, dressing so flashy. Holy Spot in the Leviticus, uh, Holy Spot in uh, Matthew chapter 23. We're going to be in and out of this book the whole day. Go to uh, Exodus chapter 28. It says, But all the works they do for to be seen of men, and they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of the garment. Let's see how the Israelites dressed back then. So we can get, you know, a good picture of it in the scriptures. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 1. And by no means, don't tell nobody, I ain't no Levite, bro. I don't even know if I'm a Levite. I don't know. So I never get up and, and try to assume the position of the title of Levite. We can only do what God said. We are kingdom of priests. We're supposed to preach. Israel, we're a kingdom of priests. But I ain't finna sit up and tell you I'm a Levite. I can accept tithes. I can do all the stuff that the Levite did back then because I don't know. If you tell them you're a Levite, you got to have it by registry. You got to know. Verse 1. Let's see how the Levitical priests dress. Go ahead. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his son with him. Yes, sir. For from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Itamar. Aaron's sons. The priest's office, the priest's sons came from Aaron's sons. Go ahead. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. It was holy garments made for him. Nice garments. Go ahead. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garment to consecrate him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Yes, sir. This, this is what the garment consists of. Go ahead. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and an ephod and a robe and a bonnet coat. I said this is, the, this is what the holy garment consists of, a breastplate. I forgot to put that picture there. But the breastplate, they had a breastplate with all 12 stones of, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And they had stones, they said, uh, what we have now? They said a row of ephod. And they had uh, ephod inside of that breastplate of all 12 stones with different colors. Then they had a row, it had a broad of coat. Now, how they dress? I wish I had the thing, I forgot to get it. Go ahead. A mitre and a girdle. He said also he had a mitre and a girdle. The mitre, the priest, had a head cover. This is what he had on his head. A mitre. This is what the Levitical priest is supposed to wear. Go ahead. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. God said, look, this is what you're supposed to do. There ain't nothing extravagant like you just got to be thousand dollar suits and all this stuff like that. He tell them, don't be so flashy with this. But I'm going to go ahead and touch on this. Uh, go to Exodus chapter 29. Just showing you what he told 
the priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees not to do. Exodus chapter 29, verse 1. This is the wardrobe of the priests. This is what they wore. They had coats. They had mitres on their head, hair covering on their head. They had uh, ephods, a uh, breastplate. They had fringes on their, uh, that's what they make the borders on the garment with fringes. All this. Exodus chapter 29, verse 1. We're going to do one and jump to four. Go ahead. And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock, two rams without blemish. So this is what they did. This is what you got to do to minister in the priest's office. Jump down to verse 4. Go ahead. And Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash them with water. When you were the priest, you need to be washed and clean. A lot of people say, man, they did it. These are, these are old laws of what they supposed. I'm just giving you an example of what God told us not to be in Matthew chapter 23, a Pharisee and a scribe. I'm just showing you the garments. God, he told us not to wear the expensive garments what we're trying to be seen for people. Go ahead. And thou shalt take the garments, put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod, and the ephod and the breastplate, and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod. And so you clothe him. You got the coat. So you got the girdle. Like I said, these are the breeches that are under the under the under the coat. What the Levites wore. A lot of Israelites say those are pants. They're the first people wear pants. Uh, just a, a girl. Got men girls, got women girls. And they pull a man girl. Go ahead. Verse 6. And thou shalt put the mitre up on his head, mm -hmm. put the holy crown upon the mitre. So he had a mitre on his head. That's a bonnet on his head. And you put a crown on his head. This is the priest. The one that sits, stands in my spot. This is his this attire. Go ahead. Then shall... Then shall I take the anointing oil, mm -hmm. pour it upon his head, and anoint him. Yes, sir. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon him. Mm -hmm. them. And thou shalt gird them with girdles. Yes, sir. Aaron and his sons put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statue. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron. And his son. So this is the attire. He said, put the bunnies. You know how the women go to sleep at night with the bunnies on their head trying to hold the moisture in? That was the priest's attire. And he tells us to be moderate in, we, in the way we dress. But these priests out here today, you look at the Hebrew brothers on the street, they flash. They look like a Superman outfit on. But they not too far from the truth. There's nothing wrong with them wearing that at all. Nothing. But me, people make fun of. But that is what the priestly attire was. But people don't go back to the law and read this now. They think we've been another dispensation. But let's go back to Matthew chapter 23. You get a little time, go through all that. You'll see. I just don't want us to be the point that, that the ones that start acting like a scribe and a Pharisee. Thank you more than what you are because you. Got a little knowledge. Got a little understanding. Matthew chapter 23, we're going to start with verse 4 again. Go ahead. 